So today we're looking at the brand new Dell XPS 15 7590. And if you're a graphic designer, video editor, or creative professional, then this is the video for you. We're gonna talk about tests that directly relate to the things you do every day to help you understand if this is the right buy for your next machine. This video is sponsored by Hostinger. Hostinger's goal is to make the fastest web pages for their clients. They believe if you're not first, you're last. And in order to be first, you have to be fast. And this could not be more true about their service. I was up and running with a new site in a matter of minutes and their support team is first class, ready to answer any questions I had. Curating an online presence is essential to growing your graphic design business or landing your dream job. With the most affordable plans and top performance in the industry, Hostinger is the go-to hosting provider to get you online fast. Head on over to see if your desired domain name is available and get signed up today. More information and links in the description below. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser, and this is the place to find the best tech and tools for graphic designers and creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Today we're talking about the Dell XPS 15, and this is my official hands-on review. I've been able to run some tests, get a feel for it, spend some time within the new machine. One positive, in my opinion, is they have not changed the design. I think they have a fantastic design here. It's slim, it's lightweight, it's durable. I love the aluminum exterior with the carbon fiber key deck. Everything is brought together very well and the build quality is phenomenal. The Wi-Fi card is a great improvement. In previous models, I could walk across the house and quickly lose Wi-Fi connection from my modem. Now that's not an issue with the improved Wi-Fi card. And so I really think that's a bonus if you're in class or at work and you're not necessarily near a hub, but you still need good internet obviously. The next thing is the GPU. They've upgraded the GPU to the 1650 from NVIDIA, giving you a 33% boost in power. And hang on, because later in the video, we're going to walk through why that is better for video editing and how it's improving the performance and the workflow for you. And as we're making our way through this video, if you're curious about the exact models that I reference, as I will reference a few different ones, you can head down into the description below, grab a link so you can go check out the specs and pricing of each model. And that is an affiliate link, so I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. The third improvement is moving the webcam from the bottom bezel to the top bezel of the screen. This helps a lot for those awkward video conferences when people were looking up your nose in the previous models, or they were staring at your fingers typing on the keyboard. So moving that webcam up to the top bezel is a simple gesture, but a very needed one for this computer. Another great improvement is the extended battery life. And although you will not get the 15 to 20 hours that Dell promises as a graphic designer, video editor, or creative professional, you are gonna get anywhere from six to 10 hours of battery life, depending on the model you purchase. The model I have is the i9 4K touchscreen display. And doing some video editing, graphic design, I'm gonna see around six hours. So if battery life is important to you, I would consider getting the i7 full HD display in order to to conserve power pushing to those high intensive battery sucking components of the computer. So keep that in mind. And we're going to talk about later the different models I recommend for video editors, graphic designers, um, and if you're on a budget, which model you should purchase of this new machine. So hang tight for that as well. For the full HD model, you're probably going to hang around eight to 10 hours of battery life. You do have the option of getting the new OLED 4K screen on the 7590, although I believe that the 4K touchscreen display that they've had on the previous models was plenty sharp, excellent color accuracy at 100% RGB. So personally, I don't see that as a big improvement, but it could be something that you are interested in. I snagged the 4K touchscreen display for the model that I'm walking through in this video. As discussed earlier, there are little changes to the build of the new Dell XPS 15. Something I personally appreciate is I think they've done a phenomenal job fine tuning this machine for creative professionals. You still have the two USB slots, HDMI port, Thunderbolt 3, headphone jack, and the SD card slot. Basically everything I need to accomplish my work as a creative professional. The model that I'm reviewing has Intel's ninth generation eight core i9 9980HK processor, 32 gigs of RAM, the NVIDIA GTX 1650 graphics processing unit, and one terabyte of solid state hard drive. It also comes with the 4K touchscreen display. 
All right, that's great. So this computer is really specced out. It's got a lot of great performance, but how do those specs actually handle real life situations inside of this Dell XPS 15? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is some video editing tests. So I'm gonna take a nine minute 4K clip I'm gonna put it into Premiere Pro and I'm gonna export it out at 4K full quality. This is an H.264 clip and it's gonna do that export in six minutes and 48 seconds, which is a very, very good export time for that size of file. Now, if you wanna save a little bit of time, maybe you don't need that much quality, let's take that same nine minute 4K clip, export it out to 1080p, and it does that in two minutes and 29 seconds. Now, comparing, you know, even machines on a level playing field, how does this compare to say like a MacBook Pro or the previous Dell XPS 15 that I own as well? Well, I've made separate videos that you can check out. You can check that out in the YouTube cards above or the description below if you're curious about those exact comparisons. All right, now I'm gonna take 100 raw photo files. I'm gonna put them into Photoshop and have them open up in Camera Raw. It does this in about 21.5 seconds which is very good because a few years ago when I was working on a 2016 MacBook Pro, it would take a minute or two to get those files ready for me to edit. And that can kill your workflow if you're doing that multiple times per day or you have to import a thousand photos. So it doesn't sound like a big deal for a hundred photos, but imagine if you have a thousand, two thousand, three thousand photos from maybe a wedding or a photo shoot that you did for a product, that can add up and that time can really kill your workflow. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of those raw files, I'm gonna boost it up to two gigs and I'm gonna save it out at full quality JPEG. And it does that in about 11.1 seconds. And that doesn't sound like a huge deal for one photo to take 10 seconds, but think about if you have to save out a thousand photos for a photo shoot you did. If that's taking your computer 30 to 40 seconds per photo, that can add a massive amount of time to your workload and really just kill your efficiency. The keyboard is smooth, has good travel, and is nice and quiet. However, the trackpad is still a disappointment to me. As a previous MacBook Pro owner, I got used to the high quality gestures and sensitivity of the MacBook Pro trackpad. They did not do that with the Dell. It is still not as good as the MacBook Pro if you're a previous MacBook Pro user considering the Dell XPS 15. The way I've combated that personally is bought a simple Logitech $25 mouse. This isn't a direct solution, but it does allow me to have a good workflow and not get frustrated by the trackpad. To me, it's not a deterrent from buying this computer, but it is something to consider if you're used to the hardware on a MacBook Pro. All right, now I think this is one of the most important parts of this video. So if you're still here hanging on, I'm really appreciative because I wanna talk about what model you should purchase. So I grabbed the latest i9 with 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. I really thought that this was gonna be just a peak model with excellent performance. However, when I compared it to my Dell XPS 15 9560, on that 4K export I was talking about earlier, the older 9560 with two generations ago i7 processor and a GTX 1050 graphics processing unit only took three minutes longer to export that same 4K file. So what happens here in this new model with the i9 processor is they're throttling back to control the temperature. And the temperatures were getting rather high. I was seeing around 80 to 85 degrees Celsius during exports. And I was getting a fan speed of around 40 decibels, roughly. And so what I saw was a machine that's getting warm and actually leading towards hot. And so they're having to throttle back, kick on those fans. And if you actually hear the fan, it, it can get quite noisy. It's not like some of the gaming machines that I've reviewed. They're like just super loud, but it is noticeable. So with that in mind, if you're somebody who's gonna be doing you know, 4K video editing, and I'm not saying like super high quality from like a red dragon camera, but if you're somebody who's doing 4K video editing, you probably will be okay with the i7. I personally, if I was gonna rebuy this computer, I would get the i7 with 32 gigs of RAM, and that would be plenty for what I need gonna have great performance, it's not gonna get as hot, and it's gonna do what I need it to do. So if you're curious about the exact models or pricing that I'm talking about in this video, you can head down in the description below, grab one of those links that is an affiliate link. So if you do purchase through that, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. My name is Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com. I thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you here on the next episode.